Hi, in this case, capital budgeting discounted cash flow software case, I'm going to go over the basics of how to complete this case and what this case is all about. So this is a case where a company is looking to acquire a new software company. They have a choice between three existing companies or starting a new firm. In each of the cases, initial investment numbers have been established for the total investment that that each of these uh, endeavors will cost. In addition, annual operating fixed costs have been uh, developed as well to show what it would cost to run each of these businesses on a per year basis. Uh, finally, the depreciation for the assets has been laid out in a straight line format and a detailed forecast of the sales for the next eight years had been developed. Now the company tax rate is 21% and the discount rate is 7% which is their WAC or weighted average cost of capital. Now the risk premium for each of the companies uh, are stated as an additional 1, 1 1.25, 1.5 and 2% on top of the discounted cash flow. And that's, that's described in this uh, comment here. So this is what you're going to add to the discount rate when calculating the net present value for the company. Okay, so let's look at the first software company, CamSim. So CamSim, we're going to do a discount cash flow analysis for CamSim. It's going to make it a little bigger here. Okay, so we have a note here. This should be a negative number, and this is the initial investment. So if you remember, from page uh, memo, from the memo, the capital requirements, the initial investment is 55000 Now the note said that this should be a negative amount and that's typical for the year zero cash flow should be negative because this is the purchase price of the corporation. And this also becomes the net cash flow <clears throat> for year zero which is typically negative. So year one becomes the first cash flow of sales revenue. So if we go back to the capital requirements page, we see that we have the sales revenue for CamSim. But now we want to be able to cut and paste this easily. So I'm going to highlight this. I'm going to copy, go into CamSim, right click, paste special, and then I'm going to say uh, transpose. And this will allow me to copy something that's um, vertical and put it into a horizontal format rather than having to type over each of the uh, input datas directly. Because if I did copy a formula, I wouldn't be able to uh, copy it across because the cells across from this are blank. Okay, so the next are the fixed costs, operating fixed costs. So if we go to the operating fixed cost for the software company it's fifteen million dollars so in this case I'm just gonna say equals the fifteen million now I'm gonna lock this down by hitting F4 to lock down the cell and this is because um, we don't have an escalating fixed cost we just have a, uh, a static fixed cost and now depreciation for Cam Sim is five thousand per year. So I'm going to say, and you could use equals or plus here. Both work as far as establishing that. But I have to F4 to lock down absolutes to lock down the cell, so I could drag it across. It was a little too far. Okay. Now, um, operating income before tax is a formula. So if you remember from basic finance, you take your revenues minus your fixed costs, minus your depreciation. This is our operating income before tax. So our taxes on the operating income, <clears throat> if we remember, it says here that the discount rate is 21%. So that is not the discount rate, the tax rate is 21%. So over here, I'm gonna say income before tax, then I'm gonna multiply it by 21% to get the after tax 
the taxes on the income before tax. So the net operating profits after tax, I just take the operating profits minus the tax and get my next net operating profits after tax. Now I need to add back depreciation and I get my depreciation. So net cash flow is actually going to be depreciation plus operating cash flow. Why am I adding depreciation to the net operating cash flow is uh, net operating profits after tax because this is net profits, not the, tr the true money going to the company's pro po uh, pocket because the cash in the depreciation here is a non-cash charge. So we have to add back that non-cash charge, get the true cash flow. And once I have this set up, I could just drag this across and get the cash flows for all the years. Okay. Now, moving forward, I need to calculate the net present value. So I'm going to go to formulas, insert function, and I'm going to search for net present value. Okay. So what I need is the rate. So remember that from the previous page, the rate for Camson is going to be this ground rate, 7%, plus a premium of 1%, which is over here we can't see. Here we go. Of this plus this 1%. So what this means is for the net present value, the rate is going to be 8%, the 7 plus the 1%. And then the values, I'm going to just highlight year one through year five. These would be the values. I'm going to hit done. But this isn't the net present value. I have to go back in and add to it year zero. And this would be the cash flow for the project. Now for the net pre the internal rate of return, this is a simpler, I just highlight year zero through five. This is something I think you should be able to do with the internal rate of return, but this is the way Excel works. You don't, you, you can't, internal rate of return is a different process than net present value. So the internal rate of return is easy. You just highlight zero from five and hit done. Uh, I did that in the wrong cell. So let's redo that. Okay, so internal rate of return and I highlight zero through five, press done. And this is the internal rate of return. So based on internal rate of return, the project's acceptable and because it has a higher rate than the cost of capital or the discount rate. And it has a positive net present value. So CAPSIM would be acceptable. So after you finish CAPSIM, then you move on to complete same process to complete source SIM, cyber SIM, and starting a new company. So you use the same exact process I detailed here to complete all three of those. So moving back to memo. So in my memo, let me just close this. Uh, I ask you to conduct a capital budget, discount and cash flow analysis for all for all four of these op options. And then I want you to create an executive summary to discuss your findings. Which of the companies should be acquired? Should the firm create a new software company? Would that be the best choice? Or should they work with an existing company? What are the advantages and disadvantages? Um, you know, so you could talk about, you know, of course, the numbers behind the discount and cash flow, but also the advantages to buying an existing car company versus starting a new company. Buying an existing company, you have existing customers. Starting a new company, you have lower costs, uh, and you can do things the way you want to do them. So using the present value and turn rate of return are the capital budgeting measures we'll use. So this is a classic yet simple um, discount and cash flow where we're taking the cash flows and we're discounting them into capital budgeting techniques. Net present value and internal rate of return. Okay, so with this case, the, um, the Excel work isn't too difficult, but the ex executive summary, I'm expecting to be a little bit more elaborate in your analysis and then also in your recommendation. All right, so best of luck to you in this case, and I'll talk to you soon.